you guys have a brush. Go ahead and grab that brush, and if you think you could create art with this brush, stand up and hold it high. We want to see who you are. If you could create some art, you're an artist. Stand up. We want to see you. Look at the artists in the room. Very good. And those of you who could possibly paint a wall with this brush, if somebody directed you, stand up. And those of you who can't do anything with this brush at all, please stand up. <laughs> and those of you who are not going to stand up no matter what I ask, stand on up. That'd be my husband. All right. <laughs> so you guys, uh, take this brush, and I want you to follow what I do here. I want you to take brushes up. Very good. Brushes down. Brushes up. Brushes down. Now reach over to the right. Tickle that person over there just a little bit. Now go to the left. Tickle that person just a little bit. Now back to the center. Brushes up. Brushes down. Stamp your feet. Turn around. Ooh, good. Okay, one more time. Brushes up. Brushes down, stamp your feet, turn around. Here we go. Brushes up, a little faster. Brushes down, stamp your feet, turn around. One more time. Brushes up, brushes down, stamp your feet, turn around. Nicely done. You guys just danced together. Good job. So if I had said, how many of you will join me in a dance this morning, how many of you would have said, oh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Who wants to dance? How many of you would have said, oh, i got to go to the bathroom, I'm out of here? There you go. And then you realized, oh my gosh, she has us dancing. Did you notice that? You're like, oh crap, we're dancing. Well, here's the deal. You guys danced in a group. It's called creative peer pressure. And you didn't even know what you were doing. You just started uh, because I told you to behave, raise the brushes. All of a sudden, you're like, oh gosh, look what she has us doing. And, uh, and you just take off following one brush. And pretty soon, you're doing crazy things. If we played some music, you'd start moving your hips, and you'd start getting into this, even those of you who don't like to dance. So I'm not going to make you do any more. You can just go ahead and have a seat now. Thank you for dancing. Give yourself a round of applause. That was good dancing. Got some energy. Good job. So this is what I do. I have people create art together, which is what you guys did this morning. You just created art. It was a dance. But it was art, and it was beautiful art. Some of you dance a little better than others. I'm just going to tell you right now. This is an example of some of the art that we create. And I'm going to tell you this story about this. And as you look at this art, you might think, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Or you might think, holy hell, I'd never hang that on my wall. How many of you are thinking that? I would never hang that on my wall. I gotcha. Okay. <laughs> the people who create this art will hang it on the wall, and they will talk about it over and over and over. So let me tell you about this innovation and where this came from. Several years ago, I was standing on a corporate stage in LA talking to a huge audience, and I was wearing a power suit and uh, really uncomfortable shoes, which is a little different than I get to dress today. And I was giving this speech, and it was words that weren't mine, and it was words that I didn't even agree with anymore. I knew that the walls of this company were crumbling, and, and that it was, it was going to happen. It was inevitable, but I had to pretend that I didn't believe that. And in the middle of the day, the jumbotron, or pardon me, first the uh, teleprompter went down. Now, if you've ever been dependent on a teleprompter, you know when that teleprompter goes down, you're kind of on your own. Well, I can make stuff up, so I start making stuff up, and the teleprompter's scrolling, and it rolls backwards, and it scrolls forwards, and pretty soon it would stop. And every time it would stop, I just thought, oh my gosh, I hope I'm on the right page. But I knew that I wasn't. And so in the, uh, we found out that the person who was running the teleprompter actually was drunk. She'd gone out the night before, and a delightful thing to discover. So she lost her job at noon. Somebody else came in, and the situation actually was no better. So in the middle of the afternoon, the jumbotrons went down, the teleprompter went down, and I'm just standing there all by myself on this stage. And I didn't have it in me to make it up anymore. And the audience was absolutely amazing. I was looking at this silhouette of people, and there was one woman with a very beautiful soprano voice who started singing happy birthday, because isn't that a fun irony? So as she sang happy birthday, somebody else followed, and somebody else followed, and pretty soon the entire audience sang this song. Now, I'm an emotional person, and I, uh, of course, started crying just a little bit, but the thing the audience didn't know is that while they were being so graceful in this situation, they actually gave me time to write my letter of resignation. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the corporate office was happy about that either. But I knew that I had to do something else and that I could do something else that was significant. 
Well, my daughter and I owned a ceramic studio, and I knew that we could get rich if we just had enough people paint cups. And so after the goodbyes were said and the um, tears were shed, I was sitting in the ceramic studio watching people paint. And lo and behold, there are two people just painting away smiles on their faces, but they're both painting the same cup. And I thought, oh, crap, we're not going to get rich like this. What have I done? <laughs> but when they were painting that cup, I thought, now wait just a minute. What if I had people paint as a group? What would that look like? Well, I'm a business person, not an uh, artist, and so I got on Google, which all smart people do to figure something out, right? Don't you all go to Google? How do you do this? How do you paint as a group? Nothing. How do you paint as a team? Nothing. How do you collaborative paint? Well, artists collaboratively paint by walking up to a canvas, and one person will paint a little star, and the others in the room will say, oh, it's so beautiful. And uh, somebody else will walk up, and they paint a little sun, and everybody in the room will say, oh, my gosh, it's so beautiful. And, and they create this art together hopefully inspiring one another to do great things. Well, it was not what I want. I thought, oh, that's interesting, but it wasn't what I wanted. Well, later in the evening, I googled collaborative art. And I happened to run across a video of a man in New York who was doing a workshop with Tunisian art rules. And when I watched this, electricity just flooded the room. I could just feel it. It was exactly what I wanted to do. This video had 40 hits, and so I started calling people. I called my husband and my daughter and my son-in-law and my grandson and, and a stray cat. And I said to every one of them, come on, you just got to watch this video. And each one of them said exactly the same thing. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, because they didn't get it. They didn't see it. And I said, we got to try it. We just got to try it. We just got to try it. And so they came together and um, watched first the video, and then they painted with me. Well, by the end of the evening, after I watched that video, we had 400 hits on something that started with 400, because I just knew it was it, and I wanted to get it right. So my family came into the room, not because they wanted to, but because I was going to feed them, and I'm the matriarch, and they knew that they'd be in trouble if they didn't. So they came into the room and they started painting, and this art may or may not be fabulous to you, but I know that my daughter's fingerprint is in the middle of that heart, and I know that everybody in that group worked on these triangles. First they were trees, then they were triangles, then they were trees. And I know each story in this art, even this little smiley face down here. But it took us about 20 minutes to create this, and at the end, the people who'd been saying, that's interesting, were like, Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Wow, we can't believe this. And we knew that we had found my thing because we created this art together. So a few days later, we decided we'd have a test group and we'd bring some friends in and see what they could do. Well, we had several people in the room, including the angry women, and the angry women actually created this piece of art. Now, they do a lot of art and they are big and bold and they used a lot of paint and they did some crazy and amazing things. And you can see that there is a poppy down here and there's a, a happy little butterfly and there's some music notes. And you can see that time is really important to them. But here's what happened in this process. One of the gals started crying. Well, that's not what you want in a test. I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I got going? And she said, you guys make me feel ins so insignificant. And it was really this watershed moment for us where she got to be honest. She was the perceived leader of the team. There was no reason she should feel insignificant. So we talked about that and got her to a place where she felt better and everybody understood one another. And it was so powerful that I was like, oh my gosh, we got it. We're doing great things. So two weeks later, my daughter um, happened to turn the lights off in the studio and she looked over her shoulder and she said, holy cow, there is a skull in that painting. Do any of you see it? Now here's the deal, after I point it out, you'll never not see it again. So we called these ladies and we said, there is a skull in this painting, and they're like, yeah! Because remember, they're angry ladies, and they were so happy that that message came through. It was the first time that we understood that teams would put messages in, these art, or in this art. We see all kinds of messages, like we painted with Operation Military Kids, and they wrote in their canvas in great big letters, unless, and they went over and over and over that. And at the end, we said, what does unless mean? And they said, well, unless dad gets deployed, unless we have to move, unless there's another war. It's a powerful message just because they were painting together. So here's the skull. There's two eyes, there's the nose, there's the mouth, here's the skull cavity, and here's some exploding brains right out the top just for effect. Do you see it now? Isn't that crazy? And they're so proud of that because that was their moment when they decided to change their lives. 
Three of them no longer have jobs they hate. They're doing things that they love, all because they stood beside one another and said, I think we can do more. So I'm going to tell you one more little story here. After we did this, I was like, well, I have the best idea in the world, and I'm going to change everybody's life, and everybody's going to be a team because I have them paint together. This is marvelous. So I called my financial planner, and remember, I'm unemployed at this point, and I said, guess what, guess what? I'm going to need my money. And what do financial planners say? What? <laughs> and so I started telling him about it, and he said, that's interesting. And I said, come on, come on, you just got to try it. Well, you can imagine how exciting, excited a financial planner was to do art. So he brought his wife, and um, we had several test groups, and the financial planner got to paint with a 15-year-old girl and a football coach. I thought, if a team of people who've never met one another and are that diverse can paint together, I'm on to something. I got it, and we're just going to roll from here. So here's what happened. The 15-year-old hung on the side of the canvas. We call it the segmented canvas when everybody paints in their own space. And she painted over here, and she had some little stick people. And the football coach was over here, and he painted the most tragic jack-o'-lantern you have ever seen. However, I found out later it wasn't a jack-o'-lantern. It actually was a smiley face, but none of us could tell that. So they painted this smiley face, and the financial planner stood in the middle of the canvas. It was absolutely fascinating. He went like this up and down. He also, I should tell you, was holding a baby, so that was helpful. And so he paints up and down, and the music starts bumping, and he goes like this. That was real. We were amazed. <laughs> Actually, I thought, oh, crap, this is not the idea. It's not going to work. i got to figure out how to sing happy birthday to these people so they can write their letter of resignation. We'll roll up the tents, and we'll all just go for home, because it wasn't working. And then the magic of the team took over, the magic of people creating side by side. And my daughter came and got me, and she said, you got to see this, because I'd left the room. I was shattered. I was like, oh, this is not good. So I came out, and the football coach had hands full of white paint. And he walked up to that smiley face, or jack-o'-lantern, and he smeared it out. And then he started smearing across the rest of the canvas, and the other people were absolutely pissed, because <laughs> he was destroying their art. And then it clicked, and this is what happens. We have three stages to this. It's called begin, where it's very segmented, and then it's called become, where the team looks up and they are like, oh my God, we're painting together. Yeah, you've been bumping one another for 10 minutes. It's a good thing you finally noticed each other. But they realized that they could paint with each other and that they could create amazing things. So they all got their hands in this, and they're smearing it out, and the financial planner got rid of the baby. I'm not even sure who held the baby at that point, because it was so electric, I couldn't take my eyes off what was happening. And the financial planner is standing back, throwing paint at the canvas, and we're like, whoa, this is amazing. And then they figured out how to create this orange blob in the center of the canvas. Now, I've never decided if that's a sunshine or a sunflower or what it is, but it doesn't matter, because to them it mattered. And to them it was about who they are. And they stood back, and they tilted their heads to the left, and they tilted their heads to the right, and they bumped each other, and pretty soon they were hugging because they'd created this art together. And at that moment, I knew I had the best idea ever. I could change the world with this. So I said to the financial planner, what do you think? Can I have my money? He's like, oh my gosh, it's not can you have your money. you got to do this. I've done all kinds of team building, hand holding, singing kumbaya. It never works. This is unbelievable. Take all of your money and run. And so, so that's what I did. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty good endorsement. So what you don't know yet about this process is that we have four rules and we have the three stages. So one of the rules that people don't know about, well, until today when I'm making it public, what, you, what they don't know until the moment they're going to put paint on that canvas is that they paint in complete silence. So they figured out how to do this without talking to one another. Now, when we're painting with hundreds of people or thousands of people, it is phenomenal to hear that room be absolutely silent. At the end of the process, men are like, oh, that was nice. <laughs> and women talk about how hard that was because it was hard to communicate, but they have to learn new modes of communication. And in this communication, they learn what brush strokes mean and they learn what bumping, one another mean, uh, bumping into one another means. And they make crazy faces at each other, trying to decide what this art should look like. So the final stage is when they complete the art and they stand back and they look at it and they take it to their office or they hang it in their homes and they talk over and over about the moment they believed in one another. 
where people who in the begin stage didn't even want to be in the room because they don't like team building, they maybe don't even like Joe that they're going to be standing beside, when they're, when they're just not excited to be there, they do like you guys did with the paintbrush and they just start painting for the team because a lot of times we'll do more for a team than we'll do for ourselves. And so you attempt to do this with the team and when you guys create something that you stand back and you're like, oh my gosh, look what we made, you feel so proud and there is this purity in the air that hangs with the team. And in that air, they can talk about new goals. They solve problems very, very creatively. It's so exciting to watch a team say, oh my gosh, I got it. I know what we're going to do next. And, and they just use this as a catalyst for change. One company that was warring, they had new stores that were coming on and they were all sure the store to the north was the problem, the store to the east really was the problem. We brought them all into a room and we said, what's going on? And we painted together and they actually got along with one another by the end of the day. There was a lot of paint thrown that day. The average canvas weighs a pound and a half. Uh, mad canvases weigh seven and a half pounds. It's crazy what a team will do with paint on a canvas. And we know now all of the stages that will happen. We know what to do. Um, if a team needs to work on change, we'll drive change with the art that's happening on this canvas. If they need to work on communication, we'll do that. So this company that was warring, at the end of the day, they stood together and just looked at a blank canvas. And they said, what if we put our hands on that canvas? Well, here's the thing, it doesn't matter if there's one person that gets their hand in the canvas or in the paint, or if there's a hundred people that get their hands in the paint. As long as one person does it, everybody in the room feels connected. They might be painting, sometimes we have a sea of canvases, and they might be painting all the way across the room from one another, but they feel connected because they got four senses involved. So this team said, what if we put our hands on there? I'm like, well, try it. I don't know. Let's see what happens because you guys aren't really that nice to one another, but let's go for it. And <laughs> so they start putting their hands on the canvas. And again, the creativity of the team took over. And they decided to write their company name on top of all those handprints. And they decided that from then on, everybody who joins their company would get to put a hand on that canvas. The other thing they did that was significant was they put a one in front of their company name because they were one group of people with one goal. And they wanted to remember that. And it was all because they stopped and stood side by side and listened to one another and followed one paintbrush stroke. They were doing something that they didn't think they could do, but they were honest with the team and said, let's try this. So that company has actually had a phenomenal change in culture. They no longer say, I need you to. They say, will you do me a favor? And they like working in that company. They have a picture of that painting in each one of their corporate offices, and it hangs where they have their meetings, and they talk about who they are and what they promised one another. So that final stage when they're doing that is called believe, and I think that's the most important stage. When you believe in your innovation and you believe in the people you're working with, you can do absolutely phenomenal things. And I know you're all in the room because you have something you believe in. And it doesn't matter if people say, interesting, or if they say, oh my gosh, it's amazing. You just got to go do it. So go out and do what you believe in. Thank you.